All right, hello and welcome everyone to the first video in a new series. And actually, to be clear, although it is a new series, um, I'm remaking a previous one. And uh, why am I doing that? Well, because the puzzles and situations and games that you're going to see in the next few videos, I originally did just with a PDF more of who wrote it in a minute, and uh, just describe the moves. But now that I've got the hang of being able to move pieces around on the analysis board, um, I decided I would remake it so that it's a lot easier to see. And um, because this particular section is very much aimed at new players and beginners, um, I've also put the coordinates around the edge so that uh, it'll be a little bit easier to understand what on earth's going on. Um, let's see what it is that we are doing. And here's what we're doing. Um, we've got another resource to share with you, uh, and by the kind permission of Dr. Dave Regis from the Exeter Chess Club. Now, we've already got his openings guide uh, chopped up into videos in a playlist uh, on my YouTube channel. And so he's been kind enough to let me do much the same with this book. And 10 Steps to Learn Chess Tactics and Combinations. So Dr. Dave starts from the most basic of building blocks and simple stuff through one move combinations, two move combinations, and then some more difficult stuff by the end. Let's have a little look through. A um, couple of blank pages, bum, bum, bum. and a little bit of an introduction. If you want to press pause and have a read, then obviously feel free, but I'm just going to carry on uh, now. And there's the contents that we're going to work through. And in this video, we're just going to go up to the end of page 12. So let's get back to our analysis board and do uh, and do that. Um, but first of all, a couple of other things, uh, how to read and write down the game. So as we go through, I'm going to be describing chess moves. So I'll be saying, you know, pawn to e4, queen takes d4, blah, 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 blah. And uh, if you're not sure how to follow that, probably a good idea to either watch my video on it, which is in the playlist of lessons for beginners, or alternatively, if you just want a quick overview, press pause now and just have a read of what uh, Dr. Dave has in the book. And there's some more bits here again, if you want to hit pause and just have a read through, feel free. Otherwise, I'm sure you'll soon get the hang of it if you don't already know how to do it. So the first thing that we'll need to do, and we'll do this using the PDF, we, we will get to the analysis board, I promise, uh, is the building blocks of combinations. Now, before we go anywhere with this, I just want to remind everyone of something, the values of the pieces. Now, obviously, if your king gets checkmated, you've lost, so the king is considered priceless. But for a queen, let's call it worth about nine. For a rook, let's call it worth about five. For a bishop, we'll say roughly three, maybe three and a half. For a knight, let's call it three. And the pawns, we just say one. So when we're working out our trades and our exchanges and our captures, bear in mind the values of the pieces. They are relative. They're not fixed. There will be times when it might be better to have a knight than a queen. But generally speaking, you're going to want the more valuable pieces because that means you've got the stronger army. So that said, some of the building blocks of combinations. Here we go. Loose pieces often known as hanging pieces or unprotected pieces. This is what they'll be called in chess books. And it's where you have a piece that has no defender. And in this situation here, although Dr. Day's put the little white button saying that it's white to move, actually both the queens are hanging. Whoever's turn it is has a loose queen. In this case, white can play queen takes queen because the black queen isn't defended by anything. And so white just wins. Of course, if it was black's move, the same would apply in reverse. We've then got outnumbered pieces. So looking at this second diagram, the circled black knight is defended by a rook and defended by a queen. But white is attacking with a bishop, is attacking with a rook, and is attacking with a queen. So it's three against two, and white will be winning if that comes to a series of exchanges. The third diagram is forks and sometimes called double attacks. And this is where a piece attacks two things at once. And of course, then you can only save one of them because you only get one move at a time. In the diagram shown, if the white, uh, excuse me, if the black knight goes to e3, it is attacking the white king and his check. 
the king must get out of the way, of course, but the knight is also attacking the queen. So it's a double attack, a fork. The knight's attacking two pieces at once. Nets are where a piece is attacked with no hope of escape. Now, a checkmate net, of course, means that you've lost the game. If your king is caught in a checkmate net or you catch the enemy king in a checkmate net, it's the end of the game. But you can net pieces too. And in this situation shown here, the black knight that's circled is caught in a net. The white bishop on a5 is attacking and the white bishop on d5 is guarding all four possible black knight escape squares. So the black knight is lost, it's been netted. Uh, in the bottom left, we've got pins, and now a pin, and its close relative, the skewer next to it, is where a piece, or two pieces, I should say, are trapped on the same line, and whichever one moves, the other is lost. So in this situation, the black bishop from d7 to c6, is pinning the queen to the king. The queen will not be able to move because it's illegal, because it would expose the king to check. The best that white can do is play queen takes bishop, pawn takes queen, and then uh, what's happened there is black has gained nine and lost three, so that's a great trade. In this diagram here, after bishop to c6 check, the king must move, and then bishop takes rook, and black has just gained a straight five points as a whole rook up and uh, excuse me has gained a whole rook i should say um ties sometimes called undermining um, is basically when you remove the defense from a piece so that you can take it so in this situation uh, the arrows tell us if white plays queen takes queen check black will play king takes of course but now the black queen from d8 is no longer protecting the black rook on a5 and that would allow the white rook to take so we've undermined the defense of the rook. Another possible tie is called overloading. And this is where a piece has too many jobs to do. So in this situation, the white queen from C1 can take the black rook on C7, because even though the black queen can go from D8 to take the queen on C7, rook to E8 is just checkmate. The queen can't defend both the rook and the checkmate square at the same time. Um, jumps are sometimes known as discovered attacks, unmasked attacks, occasionally x-rays, and uh, what that involves is having two pieces on the same line with something in the way that then moves. So looking here, queen on d7, king on d2, when the knight gets out of the way it will be check, and that will be very dangerous if the knight then attacks something more valuable. In this instance, knight goes to f4, where the x is, the queen is then attacking the king because the knight's out of the way. The king has to move to get out of check. And then the knight from f4 will capture the white queen on g2. So that's a discovered check or a discovered attack. Uh, checkmates in this one speaks for itself. The black queen is attacking the white king. There's nothing that can capture the queen, nothing that can get in the way. And the squares d2 and e2 are both protected by the black king. So the white king is trapped. So it's a special kind of net, but just for the king. Uh, decoys are going to be where we try to attract a piece to a square that we can then do some damage. So in this instance, for example, if the black pawn moves to b1, it becomes a queen, it promotes, it will be checking the white king and attacking the white queen on f1. So if the king just moves, queen takes queen and black's happy. But if queen takes on b1, then we've decoyed the white queen to b1. And as you can see from the arrow, queen to g6 is check. It's a skewer, the king must move and then queen takes b1 and black is just, oh, excuse me, a whole queen ahead. And our final basic idea is known as the clearance sacrifice. And the clearance sacrifice is where we, or a clearance move, clearance sacrifice, where we move one of our pieces off of a square so that another one can occupy it. In this example, if it was a black knight on e2 instead of a queen, it would be attacking the king and would be attacking the queen. It would be a really nasty fork. So the black queen captures on f3 to uh, clear the square. So that's the clearance. And if white plays pawn takes queen, then knight to e2 is what we just described. Knight is attacking the king 
and the queen at the same time. So effectively, queen takes knight, just wins black a full piece. Um, okay, so that said, I think it's time to get to the analysis board and look at the first few very, very, very basic things that Dr. Dave has for us. Um, okay, one moment. Okay, so as we go through this book, um, we're going to see, as Dr. Dave calls it in a second, I'll read to you, um, fancy ideas. Um, but the three most common reasons why games are lost between newer players and inexperienced players are really actually are just blunders, accidents, oversights, carelessness. And we're going to see the three most common um, sorts of these accidents in the next uh, perhaps seven, eight positions, uh, but just reading for you from Dr. Dave. The three most common reasons games are lost between learning players have nothing to do with the fancy ideas you'll see in the rest of the book. They're more like accidents than tactical tricks, oversights and carelessness of the cause, not your opponent's clever play. The three most common accidents are losing a piece for nothing, losing a piece for a less important one, or leaving a piece outnumbered where there are more attackers than defenders. So let's see some quick examples of those. And um, I'm pleased this is the big difference between the original version of this playlist and this one is I'm going to play the whole game through each time so you can uh, actually see the moves on the board. I'm also going to leave the analysis on, I think, um, some or rather more often than I did with the openings, uh, simply so you can see what should be played. Uh, rather than the awful blunders that are going to take place. So our first game, bear in mind, this is all real games. Admittedly, they'll frequently be real games from quite a low level, from beginner level tournaments or very intermediate level tournaments, but um, they're all real games. So this stuff happened. And so our first one is a correspondence game, 1993, Daniel against Gerica. And correspondence means they were playing by post. So they weren't under pressure with a time, a chess clock or anything like that. They had all the time in the world to think about the moves and still made the blunder you're about to see. So e4, e5, knight to f3, d6, the very solid, safe Philidor's defense. Nothing wrong with it. Um, absolutely fine. Oh, for newer players, by the way, the analysis bar will be on the side. Um, if it's in white, these squares up here, if they're white, the computer thinks white is slightly better or is better, I should say, if it's in black, black's better. Anything less than plus one or minus one at junior and improving and beginner levels, you can pretty much say the position is even. So at the minute, although the computer thinks white is maybe fractionally better, it's pretty even. Um, D4 is played, uh, knight to D7 is an odd way to respond but it's okay computer doesn't hate it bishop to c4 and then h6 so black doesn't really apparently want the knight coming here to team up with the bishop on this square so stops it with h6 so far so good knight to three uh, c3 c6 um pawn takes pawn takes and white castles and Really, there's probably the only three particularly awful moves that black could play here, maybe four. Um, queen to here would be awful because knight takes and bishop takes. Queen to here would be awful because not that, because knight takes. Uh, bishop to here would be awful because pawn takes. Um, black finds the fourth uh, awful move in this position and simply puts the bishop here. And watch the bar shoot off to the top. There is absolutely no defense of this bishop and the queen attacks the square. Queen takes bishop and white is just a whole piece up. And when we, so when we say the three most common reasons games are lost and one is just losing a piece for nothing, this is exactly what we mean. So as a junior player in particular, as a beginner player, as a novice, do not pick up a piece to put it on a square until you have checked that the square is safe. Imagine that there's something on the square you want to go to and look at your opponent's pieces. Is the square safe? If black had done that, they would have noticed that the square was not safe and would probably have played a move that wasn't awful. Maybe they would have put the bishop there instead. And the game goes on. So for heaven's sake, check that the squares are safe. Okay, 
Let's have a look at the next example, another one of those. So we need a nice new board. And we've got another correspondence game, 1993, Jackson against Kozlov. Let's see where this one goes wrong. E4, E5, Knight F3, F5. So the Latvian Gambit, a bit of a pet opening of mine. It's not great for black, but it's all right if white doesn't know what they're doing. Um, knight to C3 played, F takes E4 played, Knight takes E5, Queen to F6, D4, E takes D3. If you don't know what en passant is, look it up. I do have a video on it in my Lessons for Beginners playlist. Suffice to say this move isn't cheating. Uh, knight takes Queen to E6, check, Queen to E2 to block, Queen takes, Bishop takes, and probably Black now finds the absolute worst move in the position. The position's fractionally better for white anyway, because they have three pieces developed and are ready to castle. Black's got precisely nothing developed. The only pieces black has actually moved are all been swapped off. Um, so slightly better for white anyway, but the move black plays, it's hard to think that you could play a worse move. Bishop to b4, and knight takes bishop, and black resigns. Again, do not put your pieces onto squares where they can be taken. You just have to imagine there's something on b4 and check whether any of the white pieces can capture. And if black had done that, they would have seen the knight was attacking that square and wouldn't have played the blunder. So, oops. Okay, so that's the first of uh, Dr. Dave's suggested three reasons games are lost. The second is not just to lo lose a piece outright like that, but to lose a more important piece for a weaker piece. So we've got three games where that happens. We've got Simla and Avguard, 1992. So I'm just going to rush through the moves and get you to the point where the blunder takes place. Uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop to c4, and knight to f6. d4, pawn takes d4, e5, d5. By the way, if you've watched um, the playlist of Dr. Dave's opening uh, repertoire, which I did, you'll recognise this, I would think, this sequence of moves, bishop to b5, knight to e4, and... Um, Queen takes d4 from white, which is not a great move, but it's not not a great move because of the knight. The knight can't capture anyway. Since we're doing tactical things, watch what happens if I try to take it. It won't let me. It won't let me because the knight is pinned. There's another tactical thing. Um, but bishop to c5 is rather good. Queen takes bishop, no good, because the knight is protecting. Uh, so what does white do instead? Well, he's got to move the queen eventually, but actually in this game plays bishop takes c6, check. So black has to get out of check, pawn takes, and uh, white puts the queen on the almost the worst square you could imagine. I suppose queen here would be pretty awful, um, but white puts the queen onto d2. And of course, d2 isn't safe, knight takes, and that's the end of the game. Yeah. Same thing in this position, for heaven's sake, when you're going to move the queen, check the squares. You can't go here because of the bishop. You can't go here because of the pawn. You can't go here because of the knight. Can't go here because of the bishop. Can't go here because of the knight. Can't go to this square because of the pawn. Can't go to this square because of the knight. Now you know which squares are safe. You can pick one. But please, please, please check the squares are safe. Okay, uh, second one here, Dr. Dave has titled this game Profit, P-R-O-F-T. So somebody's probably going to win an exchange or win a bishop for a pawn or something. So let's have a look. I should just say I'm doing this pretty much as live. I've not, I've, other than flicking through the pages and the fact, of course, that I made the playlist months ago, the uh, one that we've deleted. But I'm just basically doing this live, so playing the moves and commenting as we go. So bishop to c4, all normal stuff, knight f6. Oh, knight to g5, right? So we've got the delightful fried liver attack, which is these two pieces attacking here. And black only has one particularly good move here, and it's d5, blocking the attack, which was played. Pawn takes, and knight to a5, bishop to b5, check, c6 to block the check. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and in our game, 
bishop to a4 it's not really the best move i think bishop to d3 yeah sure enough bishop to d3 is actually the best move um but bishop to a4 was played bishop to c5 from black castles from white queen to b6 from black pointing everything in this direction uh c3 from white i guess with the idea of playing d4 um presumably bishop to a6 from black and this is attacking the rook uh so i would imagine that the best move for white here might be b4 or d3 i'm just looking at the computer d3 is the third best b4 is the best uh, but rookie one is not going to be on the list and rookie e one is what was played and this isn't very good it's not very good because bishop takes here is check the bishop is defended so the king cannot take that would be an illegal move uh king h1 was played and bishop takes e1 queen takes e1 and uh, now we can just count the pieces because um, if we do a material count, you'll see that black is what's called the exchange up. So white has got uh, an extra bishop worth three, but black's got an extra rook worth five and the pawns are six each. So that means that black is the exchange up, as we call it in chess. Um, it turns out that the game actually continued with knight to g4, which um, isn't a particularly good move, actually. I think after d4 now, white's probably near enough equalised. Um, but white didn't play d4. White played the appalling blunder queen to e4, uh, which is a shocker because it's now mate in three. Um, knight here, check. King must come across. You probably could play knight takes queen if you felt the need, but um, knight to here is check. It's also a discovered check, a discovered attack, a jump, if you remember those. The king can't go here because of the bishop. It obviously can't go here because of the queen and the knight. So after king to h1, queen g1 is mate, the knight's protecting the queen. So yeah, not only did uh, white manage to blunder material in that one, but they managed to blunder a checkmate as well. Okay, our next one, Dr. Dave is entitled Confused and has written here, white got the right moves, but in the wrong order. Okay, so that suggests there's gonna be a horrible opening blunder and it's a category D tournament from 1995. And I think category D is basically beginner level in the United States, I think that's right. So we should give the, the players a bit of grace here if there's a mistake, but let's see what happened. E4, E5, Knight F3 and D6, so Philidor's defence. D4 is correct. Pawn takes D4, oh dear. Yeah, I'm just reading the book now. I don't think White could have played a worse move than this in the position. Uh, knight to C3, yeah. I mean, you can play Knight to C3 in a move's time after Knight here and probably Knight F6, I guess. Then you can play Knight C3 to your heart's content but you can't do it here. And I think that's what Dr. Dave meant by right move, wrong order. Of course, pawn takes knight. And um, yeah, black has just lost, uh, sorry, white's lost a whole knight for a pawn. Uh, in the actual game, I don't think white even played pawn takes pawn, did they? No, they played some other moves that weren't very good, uh, unfortunately. But okay, uh, yes. Yeah, so what really has happened is that white has lost a piece for a pawn. So has lost three for one and loses the game. Oops, I'm not taking the mickey too much here because we've all done it. We've all done it. Okay, um, the third most common reason why uh, games are blundered, why pieces are blundered and games are lost quickly at junior and beginner level, according to Dr. Dave, is more attackers than defenders. So people miscounting how many pieces are attacking and defending a square or a piece. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a correspondence game, Snyders against Grossens, 1987. So again, these guys are playing by post and they've still made the blunder. So it just goes to show how easily it can be done. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop C4, Knight f6, we've seen all this. Knight to g5, so we're looking at this fried liver attack again. d5, and e takes d5, and black plays a very odd move here, uh, b5, which is actually recommended by the computer as second best at the minute, which is interesting. And it's b5. Um, 
a distraction to to the bishop um but also saying well look you can take my knight but i'm taking your bishop well that's exactly what happens in the game white captures the knight black captures the bishop queen to e2 from white which seems to oops i've highlighted the wrong square seems to be a fork of these two pieces so a double attack um black plays queen to d5 which is a double defense so that makes sense castles from white bishop to d6 from black uh, queen to f3, interesting, and queen to d4. Um, computer says it's reasonably level here. Um, and yeah, reasonably level sounds about right. It's a bit complicated with these funny pawn structures all over, over here, and white hasn't really developed yet. So even though they're perhaps material up, they're well behind in development, but white finds a pretty spectacular way to lose the game. Um, this square here, there are one, two pieces attacking it. There's one defender. So knight to e4, which is what white played, is just a horrible blunder. Of course, after queen takes, you can't play queen takes queen because you lose your queen. So what white has in fact done is blunder the whole knight. And that's the whole point of what Dr. Dave's saying. There's one, two pieces attacking the square, only one defender. So you can't really put the knight there. A miscount, more attackers than defenders. Okay, uh, let's see. We've got two more miniature games and then that will do for this video. And Dr. Dave has called this one outnumbered and we've got Gruva against Kutzner. Mendig in 1994, and it's an under 15s tournament. So let's see how this goes. Uh, e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight to c3 is okay, but it does allow an interesting move for black, which is played in the game, which is knight takes. And this looks like you've just lost a knight for a pawn, doesn't it? But you actually haven't because of d5. And this pawn supported by the queen is now attacking two white pieces at once. So black can recover their uh, lost piece immediately. Bishop to b5 is played. Pawn takes knight is played. Uh, knight takes here is played. Another tactic. It looks like you can play knight takes knight. But as you can see, the computer won't let me. And that's because this knight is actually pinned. There's another nice tactical theme. Uh, so uh, knight takes e5, right, queen to g5 is played by black, bishop takes from white, pawn takes from black, and actually the computer says black is doing very, very well, thank you, but let's see how white can mess this up very, very quickly, the knight needs a safe square, it's under attack, uh, let's look around all the different squares, no, no, that one's safe, white could play there. That's safe. White could play there. That one, not so much. That one, not so much. That one, not at all. And this one, interesting. White chooses to go to g4. Two pieces attacking, only one defending. And bishop takes g4. And white resigns because they're a piece down. They can't recapture because obviously they lose their queen. And actually the bishop is attacking the queen. I think the only move you can play is F3. And that doesn't look like a whole lot of fun either after pawn takes, pawn takes, queen H4 check. And I think white just um, leaves the tournament room at this point in disgust. Ouch. So again, count the squares. Okay, in this position, if you want to play knight g4, that's fine. Say so count the squares, count the pieces attacking the square. But there's one, two attackers, only one defender. Of course, as you get more experienced, it's not just how many attackers and defenders, it can be which ones they are. So um, like, you know, you're not gonna wanna, perhaps, I don't know, go to a square which is attacked by an enemy pawn if your defender is a bishop. You know, you've got to think about the value of the material, but count the attackers and defenders. Okay, we have one to go, and then that will do for this intro video. And we've got a position where Dr. Dave is calling a lonely knight. So Nor against Schmidt, 1990. Let's go through the moves. E4, E5, knight F3, knight C6. 
and bishop c4, knight f6, this is fine, knight to g5, so we're back with the fried liver, and now we know, because we've seen it before, d5 is the best move, but knight e4 is still not very good, but it's probably the second best move, and that's what's played here. So this discovers, uncovers an attack on the white knight. Um, it's an awful move because bishop takes f7 is actually just winning here for white um, after the king moves. It's just horrible. Um, you're going to play d4 and just look, for example, knight takes knight, bishop takes check, king takes and you win the queen because you've skewered the king and the queen. Um, but let's not get ourselves off... Um, off the beaten track because white doesn't actually play bishop takes f7 in the game white plays d4 which um isn't very good <laughs> clearly and um dr dave puts white uncovers a defense to the knight yes he's uncovered the bishop because this pawn's not here anymore but he's failed to count the squares because the knight is attacking and the queen is attacking but only the bishop's defending so you've basically got a two to one situation and uh, not very good. So knight takes g5 is possible. Um, Dr. Dave gives a few more moves for the sake of just being complete and doing the book properly. Let's just play these moves. Uh, queen there, knight to e6. Pawn takes e5, d6. E takes, bishop takes, castles and castles. Uh, bishop to b3 for reasons. I don't know why. And uh, knight e to d4, and in this position, uh, white apparently resigned. Well, it's near enough minus five, so I don't blame them. Okay, that will do for the intros and those basic themes. So um, very much to this one was aimed at new beginners, uh, new beginners, <laughs> new players and beginners. And as we go through the book, the positions, the games will get slightly more complicated until we get towards the test positions at the very end when they really are quite tricky. So hopefully this will be a nice, useful, long series for everyone. And uh, hopefully it will help some beginners, some new players improve their chess. And of course, our big thanks to Dr. Dave Regis for allowing me to once again turn his books into videos for you. All right, see you all next time. Enjoy your chess.